I'm building a homemade table saw, and in the previous videos I built a magnetically detachable fence, made the miter slots in the table, and built a small crosscut sled. In this video, I'm going to solve the problems that the saw currently has. I'll adjust the blade so it's absolutely square, I'll increase the depth of cut, and improve the way the saw is connected to the table. Because of the way the saw is mounted, the blade has to go through the entire table, and I'm losing 26 millimeters from my depth of cut. So, let's take care of that, starting by drilling four holes in the saw's shape. I'll use these holes to bolt the saw to a plywood plate that will go in the table. I want to make room in the table for the plate that will hold the saw, so I'm marking its position right on the tabletop. I want to cut a ledge just deep enough for this piece of 18mm plywood to be flush with the table, so I used it to adjust the depth of cut. I then made a series of plunge cuts on all four sides. In order to cut off the middle, I readjusted the depth of cut to the thickness of the tabletop. After making the first two cuts, I flipped the table over, clamped a piece of wood, and screwed the middle section to it. I did this to make sure it doesn't fall as I get to the end of the cut. Now, usually making this kind of ledge is done with a router, but because I don't have one, I use the circular saw. The result is, obviously it needs some cleaning, but after some work with a chisel, I was able to get to a pretty decent result. Now it was time to drill the holes for the bolts that will hold the saw in place. I first marked their position with a pencil, but then I realized that it would be a lot easier to do with a brad point drill bit, which will mark the center of the hole. In order to be able to adjust the saw later, I need to have some play between the plate and the table. So I used a plane to remove a little bit of material from the sides, and now I have a little bit of play. I need 4 additional holes for the bolts that will connect the plate to the table. I clamp the sacrificial piece of plywood below the table to reduce the amount of blowout I get while drilling the holes. The way my adjustment mechanism is going to work is pretty simple. The bolts will run through the main plate and through the table, and will get connected to this piece of hardwood. 
I could then adjust the angle of this piece, making the blade parallel to the fence. I'll now go ahead and use the saw to cut the parts for the mechanism, and then I'll widen the holes in the table to make this actually work. With a few hammer taps from below, I transferred the position of the bolts to the workpiece. All the holes I made for the bolts were drilled with two drill bits, one the size of the bolt and a larger one the size of the nut. After some fine tuning with a chisel, I forced all the nuts into place. After marking the location of the pivot point on the tabletop, drill a hole, fill it with epoxy glue, and put a short threaded rod into it. While the glue was drying, I widened the holes in the table, and also modified this bracket so I can use it for the adjustment bolt. And when the glue was dry, it was time to put everything together. So this is how it's gonna work. The plate that holds the saw connects to this arm here and here. Now this arm can pivot around this axis, which is in line with the blade, so by adjusting the bolt I can control the angle of the blade and make it parallel to the fence. So I put the saw back on and I see my tilt is way off. Let's see just how bad is it. By loosening the bolts that hold the saw, and by turning this block of wood around to hold the left end of the saw in place, I can adjust the angle of the saw just by adjusting one of the bolts on the right, if that makes any sense. So I rotated the blocks and loosened all of the bolts except for this one. Now, as I loosen it, the angle of the blade will change, and then I could calculate the size of the shim I need. So that's one turn, two turns, looks a lot better but I, I think I need a bit more, two and a half, okay that looks good. So two and a half turns on an 18 threads per inch bolt, that's 964 or three and a half millimeters. <laughs> that's way too much, it doesn't make any sense to use a shim that thick, something here is way off. So I took the saw off again, and here's the problem. The saw itself isn't true. Apparently, there is a small screw here that acts as a stop for the tilt mechanism. So it, it needs to be adjusted, and I'll do that soon. While I was playing with the tilt, I noticed that this arm prevents the saw from tilting all the way. So I need to take some material off it. Just like before, it's the circular saw to the rescue. That actually came out pretty decent. I want to have a removable insert around the blade. This is important for using the tilt and still being able to use zero clearance inserts. I came up with this shape for the insert because I wanted to have support on both sides of the blade and still leave enough material around the bolts that hold the saw in place. Because the saw was taken apart and I didn't have another plate, I made the cuts on the jigsaw which is probably the most inaccurate tool in the shop. So, it fits, but the result isn't very accurate. Underneath the insert, there's a thread for a small bolt, which is used to lock in place the small rip fence that came with the saw. 
So I'll mark its location and make a hole for a bolt that will hold the insert in place. I'll put the saw back in place, but before putting on the insert, I'll take care of the alignment. It's a bit hard to see, but there's still a slight misalignment. You can see when I move the square back and forth, the light at the top disappears just a fraction of a second before the light at the bottom. And now, with the insert, it's really easy to adjust this by undoing the tilt knobs and playing with the adjustment screw. And now, it's completely square. Now, let's make sure the blade is parallel to the fence. When I move the fence all the way towards the blade till it touches it, there's still a small gap at the front. After loosening the main plate, I can loosen the locking nut and fine-tune the angle of the blade. I calculated that each 6 of a turn of the bolt changes the angle of the blade by 0.029 degrees. And now the gap between the blade and the fence looks even. The first thing I'm making on my new table saw is a more accurate plate and insert. After drilling the holes in the plate, I could easily attach it in a slight angle to a piece of plywood for it to have some play for the adjustment. Now that's more like it. After some adjustments, I used the 5 cuts method to check the alignment. One end of this 24.5 cm long piece is exactly 5 mm wide, and the other end is 4.85 mm wide. This difference of 0.15 mm is actually 0.03 mm per cut, which is an angle of about 0.0001 degrees. Well, I think that's good enough for now. That's all for this time. I still need to build a proper base for the saw, but other than that, it's pretty much done. I can't wait to actually use the saw to build a project other than the saw itself. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. Until next time, thanks for watching! If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to watch me finish the table saw and use it to build more cool stuff.